So give us an example of your training regime or one of your more productive routines that you did for yourself. Now, this is clear for the listeners. This is what Pete does for himself that that's productive for you. And I think that could be cool just for perspective. People like the insight on what the pros are doing. So I think it would be cool for you to just touch on it. Like how, how did you arrange it? What's the amount of uh, volume that you would typically do the frequency in, let's say an off season leading up to a potential contest prep. Yeah, absolutely. So off season leading up to a potential contest prep with the deliberate focus of gaining muscle. One of my favorite programs is like a five day split. And again, pairing back with triceps, pressing movements and biceps and then legs, and then maybe a day off in the middle of the week and then a full upper body and a full lower body. The upper body, I would switch and have like arms first. So in the earlier sessions, I have compound lifts first. So, you know, things like, depends if I really want to build the lats on back day, it would be, you know, maybe pull-ups, chin-ups, lat pull-downs, that sort of thing first. However, um, if I'm a very lat dominant person and I'm looking for more thickness in my sort of mid upper traps, rhomboids, those sorts of areas, I might start with like a horizontal pulling movement, like a row to begin with, and then sort of work the way down. And what I would do is for each body part, volume wise is going to change, but on average, let's say tw roughly 20 sets sort of per body part, but it might start just below that and build up above. So in say week one, I might be doing somewhere between 15 and 20 sets per body part. And then, you know, by week eight, week 10 of that program, I might be doing say 25 plus sets per body part. I probably don't really want to be doing too much more than that. And that, that's put, that's throughout the week, not in one session. So right. just to be clear, I'm not doing chest and I'm doing 25 sets on like, you know, like 12 sets of bench press and then four sets of flies and then four sets of incline press and stuff like that. It's just like maybe 12 sets on a Monday and then, you know, 12 sets on a Thursday type thing. And that's toward the back end. It wouldn't start in week one like that. It might be like, okay, eight sets on a Monday and then six or seven sets, you know, on a Thursday or something like that. And that's kind of like my weekly volume. And then that bumps up just slowly. And then after say eight to 10 weeks, it's just like moving up. But then also sort of, I guess the way I program it as well is, is making sure that like, if I have one body part, that's, I'm really want to focus on, let's say I really want to build the chest or I really want to bring up my legs or whatever. It's just like, you can't just keep increasing everything all the time because you can have like this, I guess, overall sort of systemic fatigue as well, where it's kind of just like, oh, if I do tons of extra volume on my legs, tons of extra volume on my chest and back and everything like that, it's not so much that that body part is getting over fatigued. It's just like my nervous system is just smashed. And it's just right. like, oh, like I go to chest day and it's just like, I can't lift anything because I just did all this volume on legs and then all this volume on back that my nervous system just cooked. So it's just kind of like making sure you, you balance it. So if you moving to the higher end of volume on one muscle group, it's like you almost got to pull that from somewhere else. And I think it also means that you have to get comfortable sacrifice and delayed gratification. Cause it'd be like, it might be like for this 12 week training block, I want to build my legs more than anything, but I really, really want to build my chest and my back. Actually triceps could do a bit of work too. And then you end up not really optimizing. Whereas if you just say, okay, cool, I'm going to do a modest amount of progressive volume on those secondary body parts but the focus is just going to be on my legs. Then you can do that for that training block, build them up. And then maybe for the next training block, you might say, okay, I'm going to do it again. And then after that, I'm going to do a training block where it's just like more chest focused kind of thing. I guess once you build those body parts up to that level of performance that you're kind of comfortable at, it's sort of maybe a little bit easier to maintain. Sort of like when you first try and cross that threshold of being able to bench press say two plates or whatever your goal is kind of thing it's very very difficult to get to that level but then once you've been doing it for a couple of years you can like maybe taper it back and do it with a little bit less overall effort on your whole body and then you can sort of bring other things up as well so so you're specializing I guess that's, yeah you're specializing mm, yeah. certain body parts at certain times in terms of the amount of volume you're giving to it yeah yeah and right. that's that's how I'd build a, uh, a lot of my programs. But I feel like if everything's already like reasonably in proportion, or if you're just not sure what you want to build more, the best bet is to just kind of keep it all within that range. And you don't have to play around with trying to really specialize and, you know, bring this up or bring that up. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's like uh, between 10 and 25 sets potentially in a given week for a specific muscle group, depending on if you're specializing or not, or if things are kind of, all yeah, yeah. floating around the same range. 
Yeah, yeah. And okay. I know that's a very, that answer is like, it's, it's between 10 and 25. It's not all that specific <laughs> to be like, so for, for your listeners being like, well, what am I going to do? I don't know, you can always hire me and I can do a program. Because <laughs> I feel like sometimes like to try and... Uh, it's too general. It's got to be specific to the too, individual, too, right? Yeah, yeah. Try, trying to create something that's general is, yeah, obviously going to be less personal, less individualized. So yeah, anywhere from 10 to 25. But if you're building up that progressive volume and intensity over that time, you're going to see progress. So that's very interesting. So you're progressing the volume, the intensity as well of effort. You're also progressing that over time, or is it pretty standard in terms of like taking sets close to failure? Like, are you always doing that from week one to say week 10 before a potential deload week? Yeah, yeah. So you do want to see that progress. I won't progress the effort every single week. So okay. I'll always, I'm always going to stay within for hypertrophy, always going to stay within probably close to three reps to failure. So not too far away from failure. You want to, you want to take it pretty close, but then every couple of weeks I'll take it to failure, pushing it that little bit further. But I guess if you do that, like all the time, the research suggests that sometimes it can hinder you a little bit because it can push you over what your body can recover, recover. from for the next week from the next week and then if if your performance goes backwards then it's kind of like oh you're having your, you're basically deloading every couple of weeks kind of thing so you want to keep a check on that as well yeah that's a great point i think even for those who have a lower frequency and love to push that intensity of effort can run into potential issues too even with recovery because if the intensity is just way too high above what you can tolerate even one session a week you might smash you and then you're like it takes you so long to recover from even just one potential session. So, um, and then next thing you know, you're training like once every eight days and then it's like, what's happening here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, that's the big thing, right. With the intensity, like, why is it intensity versus volume? You know, you know, that whole, mm. th there's like a, th it's like a, people love to talk yeah. about it, right? but it's not a versus yeah. thing. I think they all have to work together in the right formula for the individual. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I, I think a lot, a lot of research, shows that as well that you, you kind of need to see progression in, in both yeah no that's great so you're pro so basically how you do things it's like a five-day split two recovery days on average right sometimes six days a week yeah you you tend to progress those variables in a methodical fashion we'll say yeah 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 cool let's talk about what goes into optimizing muscle growth for an advanced lifter yeah, absolutely. So if I was going to design a program to build muscle, I want to be increasing performance and volume over time. And so how I would do that is structure into the program these gradual incremental increases in volume, but also in, you know, intensity performance over time. So I'd normally do it like maybe 